Medium pros call to order today, Thursday, March 30th, 10.49 a.m. My name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Chauvin Roche, Ms. Cheryl Renatza. Staff is four seated at DOAC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our remote location is West Baton Rouge Parish Jail with staff and support at West Baton Rouge. Introduce yourself. Hi, Warden Jude, West Baton Rouge Parish. Good morning, Warden. Good morning, Ms. Alvin. All right, Warden, thank you. We're ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Um, Paxton Greer, 369545. All right, Paxton, you heard the introductions. We'll be your pro panel, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement and take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Paxton Greer, DOC number. Three six nine five four five. You're a first class offender for eligibility date. Uh, now your good time date five five twenty twenty seven. Full term date one seven twenty thirty five. Nineteen year sentence. Manslaughter. Looks like you were revoked uh, in twenty twenty one. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And what were you revoked for? Um, I I took a charge of criminal mischief. And been being behind on my fees. Yeah. What are you currently doing there at the facility? Oh, I'm a trustee. I've been a trustee here ever since I've been here. I've been incarcerated, and um, I completed um the parenting class. The B been been a low risk. They said I wasn't eligible for anything else, and I've just and been doing good. I don't I don't get into trouble, anything of that nature. Right up free. And, Any transition. And, Sir, no transitional work. You're not doing. You're just working for the facility. I work in the kitchen. I work six. Work sixteen hours in the kitchen. And, and you know, you, you got out from the charge, and, and you still had that criminal mischief. What's that? What was that all about? The criminal mischief. Well, I had a. I was dating a female. I was staying in Rapids Parish. I'm from Independence, Louisiana, and I was I paroled over there, and I got married. Since then, I've been divorced, and um. I mean, the female, we didn't have a, it wasn't an incident. The police made an incident. She dropped the charges. Um, the, the, the DA picked it up. The DA investigated, went and spoke with her. She didn't want to pursue it, but they still, they had another guy that was with me the day that um that I had, when him had the same lawyer. And his parole officer told me that he was on parole for drug charges. I was on parole for, on, on the murder charge, but I had no idea that by him being on parole for uh, um, a drug charge that, when he said that we both call, call out to, uh, that we both cop out to criminal mischief, that we would go home. But I didn't know that I would have to come before the board being that I was on a violent offense. So he went home and I didn't. That's how I ended up going before the board and being revoked. Had I known it, I would have I would have went on the trial and had the charge thrown out. The charges were dropped. But since then, I have no contact with her or my ex-wife or anyone. Uh, you do have opposition, you know, you have opposition. This, uh, what are your plans if you were to be released? Where you go? What you going to do? Uh, I'm, I'm, mo I'm moving to my, with my sister, um, an independent semester on 13011, um, Independence, Louisiana. I have a job already waiting on me. Um, Where? In New Orleans that we've got it. I have a, um, my family owned business um, on my dad's side. That's a good little haul from Independence to New Orleans. Well, I have um I have a truck and a car. That's a good little hour drive, at least, huh? One way. Yes, sir. It's in, the, yeah. the store is in um is in, in Slidell. Well, you said New Orleans. The store there's three of them. It's one on North Broad, it's one on Gentilly, and there's the one in and there's one in um in Slidell. The one it's not open the one in Slidell. That's the one I'll be running. You know, it makes it still it's, it might be it's it, 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 it's just as far as slide L as it is to the Gentilian. Yes, sir. Yep. It's an hour drive. Yep, a little over an hour. All right, what, um, Warden, you got any input for us? Uh, sir, all I can tell you in, in uh, my 14 years of correction, uh, one of the most humble offenders I've ever had, um, great worker, uh, great with trying to work with the youth in my facility. And uh, he, he's been a he's been a pleasure to have here. All right, thank you. I mean, would you answer Mr. Roche's question, please? 
Yes, Mr. Grayson, how are you? I'm blessed. Boy, Drew said you're a humble person. Why so much violence? And violence against family members. I saw no family member in 1993. I saw no family member in 1993. Uh, simple battery and aggravated assault, 1994. Second degree murder in 1995. What's all the violence about? Well, sir, the, um, the individual that I guess at the time that they was, those charges were pressed on me, they, they're not convincing because when people press charges, they don't be understanding the ramifications of their actions. Until I okay, okay, okay. Now that's going to 2015, only seven years ago, aggravated assault, second degree battery, false imprisonment. And you were revoked, and only in 2021, you were revoked in 2017, also, right? No, sir, I've only been revoked, I was revoked in 2019. In 2017, I went to work release. Okay, my records show that the supervision was revoked on February 27, 2017, as a result of a new felony arrest for aggravated assault, second degree battery, and false imprisonment. Those charges were dropped. But you were revoked? No, I, I, I guess that was the process they would call it, but. um. That was an attack mm -hmm. on me. I wasn't. I wasn't being violent. My murder charge. Um, I had a life sentence, and my charge was commuted to manslaughter because it was self defense, and I proved it. I went through okay. my appeal process. <laughs> okay. So, so the records I have in front of me are wrong. Yes, sir. I have. I have no. I have only the felony. I have is the one the murder charge. I have no other felonies. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Um, yes, sir. I would like to say to Miss Renasa, I, I was in Angola with her and that you've always been an awesome person. And this ain't for, um, I apologize for to the whole board because when I was released in 2015, I was really so excited, Miss Renasa, to I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to my my parole, my, my guidelines. And, and I'm not a failure. Um, I read a success story and I just asked for another opportunity. And I apologize for not reading the small print when I was getting those signing those papers for my parole um, eligibility, I didn't know that I would still be under the restraints of DOC. And um, and my problem, you looked at my things, I've always been women. Well, I don't, I don't have, I don't have no one now. You know, I've lost eight family members to COVID, and um, I'm alone. That's why I have Mr. Jew just here, and I just asked, I'm moving back home with my sister, and so I'm not in the position of, you know, for a woman to um to put me in a position to where I would, where those type of charges will ever be seen again in my life. I have an eight-year-old son, and I'm 49 years old. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in prison. I spent 20 years in Angola. It is, it was rough. These three and a half years I've been locked up has been rough, and you know, and it, and it hurts. And I can't, I can only speak for myself. And I just ask y'all is that I am an individual that'll make y'all proud of me. If I was given another opportunity in my exercise, I have a job, and I just want to be. I have 16 grandkids and two great grandkids, and I'm, 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 I'm older now. I just want to be. Be with my family, you know, with my grandkids, and I and I will ask the so so humbly and respectfully to ask y'all to just give me one more opportunity to make y'all proud of me because I'm a still I'm on parole to 2035. I'm more in debt to y'all than I am to society, so I have to I have I definitely have something to prove to y'all, and I didn't know that, but I then I and I just asked y'all let me prove to y'all that I'm 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 a success story, and I would never ever let y'all down again. All right, thank you for your comments. Thank you for coming from Found Fair to vote. I'll vote first. Uh, listen, you're right. You, you know, you, when you have a charge like that, you got to walk a tight line. I mean, that's just that's something that, that was done, something that, that you were charged with in the past. You were revoked. You do have law enforcement opposition and victim opposition. You, you know, uh, your good time date is coming up for me today. I'm just not prepared to vote for you uh, to be released. My vote is to deny your parole. Spinoza. Mr. Um, Mr. Blair, I uh, I hear what you're saying. I was impressed by what Warren Duke had to say about you. I've enjoyed listening to you today. I believe you have a good transition plan. You do have a low risk score. My vote today would be to grant you. All right, Mr. Um, Roche. All right, thank you. Mr. Graham, based on a poor supervision history, 
DA's office is strongly opposed law enforcement opposition in a history of violence. My vote is to deny your request. But you have two votes to deny and one to grant. Today, your pro has been denied. Good luck to you, and we'll adjourn at 10.59. Thank you for I wonder if Ms. Renatza only granted because she knew Mr. O'Shea wouldn't. Um, let me see. I, maybe I was putting his name in wrong. Hoxton. G R N Y E R. I was trying to find the, the crime which he was talking about. And I couldn't find it. And usually you would be able to if he has like appeals. And if it got dropped, showing that it was. Now that's what I'm confused about. It's like he was locked up for it, but then it was dropped because he proved that it was self defense. And if he's proved that it was self defense, then why do they keep bringing, bringing it up? That just wouldn't be fair to him. But I can't find the information. Anyways, it, 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 it's not impressive. He, Mr. It's, you know, it's interesting that Mr. O'Shea went down the line. He's like, 1993 assault against a family member. 1993 assault against a family member. 1994 assault against a family member. 1995 second degree murder. <laughs> it's like, what? And then he, that he got locked up. He gets out. He gets out, and then he gets assault again aggravated assault and then and then his answer and it's all against family members right i mean mr o'shea's what he said was the warden says you are a humble person how come so much violence against family members and then his answer you know, as to why he should get out and, and what his plan is, is um, I'm not in position for a woman to put me back here. He, he's blaming it. He, I mean, you heard that? I'm not in position for a woman to put me back here. I don't have anyone. I'm going to live with my sister. Oof. Is it? Is the violence against family members just like his his wives, not his sisters? And that's one question. And then two, it's like it's like he's just complete has no awareness that dude, you can't blame it on anyone but yourself. Like until you realize that you're gonna keep getting locked up, it it's like where you want to feel bad, where I want where I want to feel bad, and I want to say, hey, you know, you're locked up, you're free, you got revoked. It's like no, but just stop, keep your hands off of off of other people, don't beat up women. It's like the most cowardice thing you can do. One of the most, not the most. What, what do you do? Like, what is it? It's such a, it's such like a lowly thing. It's like a, it's like a pure, you, you just want to rage on someone that probably can't defend your, themselves because they're, you're twice their size. How, like, when did that just, when did that become something that, just is so it seems so rampant <laughs> and uh, you know a lot of it just has to do with the thought process i think not a lot of it but i'm like you can't you know it's like when you get up here and you plead in front of a parole board and your answer is that I'm not going to do anything because I'm not going to surround myself by women. There's going to be no woman that puts me back in jail. Yeah. 
And you know, it was kind of funny. That's when I bring it up. Miss Fernasa, like, is the one that would grant him. And maybe it's because she just knows Mr. O'Shea so well, and he she just wanted to be like, you know, they they do do that. I think I think they are a little tactful and and trying to give a give some type of courteous pass when they know that it will fail. But I don't know. You know, and they said that there are victims that are opposed. It's not even like one of those situations where the victim uh, takes it back. Oh, that was the other interesting thing. He, uh, right at the beginning, we almost forgot about this, how him and a friend were both had the same attorney and the attorney's like, oh, just plead to it, plead to it. You'll, you'll, and he plead. <laughs> And they're like, no, it's a violent offense. You're getting locked back up. Talk about getting bad legal advice. And he could have fought it, and the DA probably would have dropped it, right? It was interesting what he said. Well, the police didn't file charges. The DA, and give kudos to the DA, said, no, no, no. We're sick and tired of this stuff. We're going to file anyways. And they had no witness and because she wasn't going to probably go to the stand and i wonder how the da thought that they would actually convict him but they somehow got him in, into a situation where he took bad advice from an attorney pleaded guilty and then got picked up and it's like man you know an attorney to give advice that gets their client locked up for three years uh you should be disbarred that's unacceptable like that's your one job is to know is to know is to keep your client out of jail and as imagine if you paid him and he got locked up by giving him bad advice which was probably just a google search away <laughs> it's like pretty nuts it's pretty nuts man uh be careful who you hire as an attorney definitely do your homework if you can be in a place where you can afford one don't just pick one up it's uh, probably something that you want to do a lot spend a lot of time researching go on a uh, go on a lot of dates and figure out anyways with that I'll let you go.